the metropolitan area, which again is a, a focus point for the whole issue of hate, the largest city in the state, in the country for that matter, that basically talks about hate and, and, uh, and racism aspect of it. Portland, Oregon, I mean, just happened to have someone who has been very, very much involved in politics and, and as a businessman, I mean, imagine being committed and, uh, and being able to deal with some of the major issues here in the city of Portland, in the state of Oregon for that matter, and still maintain a business relationship and still a successful business person. And I'm talking about a gentleman by the name of Fred Stewart. You're going to know a little bit more about him as he goes along with what he's going to be sharing with us today. What Fred is going to do today is that he's going to respond to an article. Uh, and like I said, I'll, we'll talk a little bit about this article. But uh, what I'm going to do as, an, as part of that introduction of that article aspect of it, I'm going to, I got my sidekick here with me, Teresa, Ray, <laughs> Teresa DuPay, Kenny DuPay, a good friend of mine's wife. Uh, she's an editor and a writer in her own rights aspect of it. And uh, she also got involved. And in fact, uh, she was part of the editing of uh, uh, the introduction to a certain degree of the article. Uh, and I thought it was really, it's fantastic. So I'm going to give Teresa the opportunity to just kind of just do a little brief overview of what do you thought about that article? You wrote that article, and you, you, you well, the article um, I pretty much edited. Mm -hmm. um, Fred sent me his statement, and it had the bare bones and the facts, names, and certain details, and I just fleshed those out and created an article um, where he could make his statement about what happened September 5th, which was just a few days ago. Mm -hmm when he bumped into a particular editor yes, yes, of yes. a particular newspaper, Willamette Week. Yes, yes. And I might add, too, that Teresa is, is also, she's also a co-host here at the Oregon Voters Digest, and she's very, very much involved in community, like her husband is also, too, former Portland policeman who's also ran for, for sheriff for Multnomah County here in the Portland metropolitan area. So that we're very, very much involved in a whole bunch of things. So this is not just a fluke, folks. This is a very serious issue. But again, we're trying to get to a point where we can, can in fact, uh, assimilate, if you will. We've got we've got problems assimilating, and here we are in the 20th century, and we're still having a problem with an issue that's major, major, major stuff. And so that's one of the reasons why we're getting ready to do this show. And I I really think this this really opens the door to really having a serious discussion on assimilation, on solving some of the problems because we can't continue to do this in this country for that matter. Yeah. But we're fortunate to have uh, the situation being brought to the table to a person who has been actively involved in community, a business person, uh, been born, basically raised right here in the city of Portland, but he knows Oregon, he's very much involved with all kinds of things. Excuse me, he's not a, he's not a hater or a racist, he's just, an, he's a, he's just a committed person for com community and, and just a committed person, very independent minded, and that's what we need. Fred, that's you. Hmm. So why don't you just go take it from there, Fred, and tell us about that, that, that the issue that we're talking about. Well, the article. first off, the article, you can go to my website, fredstewart.com, and uh, it's the last posting on there, so it's going to be easy to find. So fredstewart.com. Fredstewart.com okay. is uh, where it's located at. It's about an interaction I had with um, an editor, uh, the, basically the guy who's running Limit Week, Mark Zussman. Now, I've known Mark for many years. Um, and we've had a cordial relationship. I mean, I would say we're friends, but we've never been in, anywhere near drinking buddies. No, never hung out with each other. Or you can say if you can consider community work pro, uh, professional, more professional relationship than anything else. Um, see each other, say hi. He has questions, he'll call. You know, I have suggestions I'd call over the years, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, last year when I ran for Portland City Council, I... Um, faced a lot of racism, not just from um, Willamette Week, but from City Club and a few other places. And I've been thinking I should say something mm -hmm. because I think more bl black people should run. And I know a lot of black people have the interest to, to run, but they're worried about that theater of racism. That's a completely different theater of racism than the theater that we deal with normally. And it's intimidating to a lot of, I think, very highly qualified black people. And so I decided to write this article because I'm hoping to, believe it or not, encourage more minority people, more people of color, uh, more minorities in general, um, to go ahead and, 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 and go into that theater and, and run. Um, I myself haven't decided if I'm going to run this next time or not for city council. But regardless whether I run or not, I... I think it's what this is. Uh, our process is one of those things. Is the more people that engage, the better we all are. So first off, before we get into anything, if you're a minority, black, brown skin, gay, 
whatever. Don't be afraid of pub pub public service. Don't be afraid of, of people like Mark Zussman and Neil, Nigel Jaquees and other very bad influences in Portland that we have out here in our journalism community. community. Our journalism com community, in my opinion, is one of the biggest encumbrances we have to us being more progressive than we actually are. Yeah. We tend to vote for people in our community that aren't as progressive as the voting base is. Um, and I, I blame a lot of that on our, our, our journalist com community. Uh, they're very bigoted uh, as a community. They're very racist. Um, they're not as homophobic as they used to be, but I still think that, uh, you know, it's still there. Um, and I just want to call attention to people about that, that a, our journalism community isn't, there's no watchdog on them. Right. You can be as racist as you want to be. As, you could be a David Duker. <laughs> let alone a Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And um, there's really no checks and balances uh, to make sure that the person that you're reading, the, the person's providing you the information they feel is important for you, to, and, and the way that they feel is important, is a credible person for you to pay attention to. You don't have the tools, because in general, the journalism commun community does not tattletale on each other. They'll tattletale on politicians they don't like, They'll tattletale on politicians that are, are advocating things they don't like. But they don't tattletale on each other at all unless, you know, it's a very, very weird or rare circumstance. So I come across, I'm at, I'm at the uh, club one day last Friday, I mean last Monday on the 5th, just working out. And I, I come across R Mark Zussman. I didn't even recognize him. I haven't seen Mark in probably over a year. Um, his hair is a lot whiter uh, than it was the last time I saw him. And I just didn't recognize him. I was walking by him. And um, Mark called me over. Um, he's seen some things on my Facebook. He's heard about some of the positive steps I've taken to help make changes in our journalism community. And But the, what, the, what he was concerned about was me labeling him and his organization as a racist organization. Now, friends, I want you to understand something about Lambert Week. Lambert Week uh, has hired next to no black people in uh, the last 30 years, at least. Um, depending on who you talk to, they've hired one or two. And the ones that they have hired, it, the people who do come up with different names, they're usually in things like, you know, jazz or whatever, the music. Fluff. You know, fluff. They, they call it fluff, it's important. <laughs> but they, they, they don't get into the culture of Portland, the society. They don't, they, they're not staff writers that mm -hmm. write about the politics or the news of the day in Oregon. They generally don't do that with black people at all. And they're not alone. Uh, Oregonians the same way and so is the Tribune. But Willamette Week is most particular in that Willamette Week um, has a long history of basically um, insulting or belittling the contributions of black leaders in the city of Portland. You know, people like Lou Frederick, Broody Archery, Derek Foxworth, you know, they ignore contributions um, people like Sam Brooks have made and uh, Carl Talton. And, I mean, there's a long list, guys. I mean, it would literally take the whole show for me to list all of the incredible black people we've got in Portland that have contributed to Portland. And because of that, a lot of white Portland has got a skewed understanding of what's really going on when it comes to race, when it comes to racism, when it comes to Portland, Oregon, their city, especially the people who are just moving here. And, you know, um, last year when the, when the Willamette Week wrote that article um, about my daughter uh, and I, you know, my daughter and I don't get along. We, my daughter is a teenager. Um, you know, my family and I, we demand a certain level of respect. My daughter doesn't want to give it. So we don't see eye to eye. And I'm sure I'm not the only father or only family has to deal with stuff like that. But, you know, they insinuated that I'm abusive, that I beat my daughter that I beat my ex-wife, and people that know me, people who have done business with me, people who have grown up with me, people who are in my family, you know, they all know this is a lie, and they all know that it's wrong. But these guys on basically one source of information, my daughter, uh, and maybe my ex-wife, which my family and I would consider to be the same one, they decided to write this article and basically saying that I'm a, a, a black guy that goes around and beating women. Not understanding... When you're dealing with a black candidate, especially if somebody's been around a long time like me, you want to be 
fair. And to be fair, you want to investigate, do a thorough investigation to make sure these accusations are true. If these accusations are true, I honestly believe the newspaper should report it. You run for office and you commit a crime, you beat people up, the, the media should talk about it. The media should inform the public about it. But they shouldn't, they shouldn't lie. And one week lied. Um, and, you know, I've been thinking of what, what, what I can do to prevent this from happening in the future. And that's what Mark was talking about uh, when he came and approached me. Uh, the steps that I'm beginning to take, um, the unique skills that I've got and relationships that I've got in this town that allow me to do things that maybe a lot of other people wouldn't be able to do or wouldn't be, um, you know, they'd hesitate to do, that I'm not hesitating to do. Because I want uh, the next cycle of uh, politics that we're in right now to be different. I don't want racism. Um, part of it. I don't think I'm going to be able to destroy it on my own or the people working with me we're going to be able to destroy it on our own, but I want to get us on a path to where there's more fairness um, in the way you know politics are performed here in this town. Now, keep in mind, there is no fairness doctrine in politics. Politics by nature is not a fair uh, atmosphere, but, you know, we do have to do something uh, to allow more people who are not your normal political candidates, especially when they're not white, um, to feel comfortable with jumping in and contributing to the process. And that's where these guys like Mark Zussman get in the way. Mark Zussman, Nigel Jacquees, and everybody in the Oregonian editorial board, everybody on the Portland Tribune editorial board, they are basically the great wall of, 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 of advancement for the people of Portland when it comes to politics. Um, they generally only support white candidates locally. They generally are only interested in issues that are what they consider important to white people. Um, they do not feel the public, no matter how much marching uh, white Portland does for equality, for women's rights, against racism, they generally, when it comes to the political candidates that, um, um, that they endorse, they generally aren't interested in the political candidates or interested in any of that. Period. The 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 um, questions they ask us, um, the interviewing process, mm -hmm. everything is pretty monolithically um, white. Uh, I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, last year, when I ran for office, we had one of the worst years for black on black crimes that we've had in close to thirty years. Um, we've got a, a, a growing gap in, in, in unemployment between black and white people. Um, especially our younger people um, in this town. And we've got what, what a lot of people are calling as black flight out of Portland. Black people are being either pushed out of Portland or choosing to leave Portland. Not one editor, not one newspaper asked me about any of that. Here you got a black candidate who grew up in Portland, knows a lot of people, black and white, that weren't even interested in it. None of them were interested in talking about solutions to our gang problem and our violence problem in general. Um, if, if an issue such as gun control came, you know, came up, it came up only in basically the normal national ways that we hear it, not in a way that affects the average person in Portland. Um, that's just how they are. And most of it is because I did not meet one black writer or editor in 2016 during my uh, campaign. Even when I sat down with the Scanner newspaper, which is a Scanner news group, they had uh, pretty much a 50-50 mix between black writers and white writers. This is a black newspaper. This is a black newspaper. <laughs> so they had, you know, pretty much when I was sitting there with uh, uh, Brittany Foster and his people, I'm there with women, men, gay, straight, a pretty integracial, you know, interracial, inter integrated, uh, multi-everything. And the questions they asked were pretty much more Portland. When I say Portland, more of what I heard going on the campaign trail coming from your average citizen than I heard from the Oregonian Willamette Week or Portland Mercury or, 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 or Portland Tribune. None of those guys really encompassed what your average citizen in Portland was talking to me and other candidates about. And that's where the problem with racism, I think, comes in. So, you know... I look at what Mark Zussman did to me. I look at what he did with um, um, Lou Frederick. Lou Frederick's an incredible guy. Um, right. yeah. Lou Frederick, when I was a kid, those of you who um, were here back in 1979, 80, when Lou Frederick hit town, 
old black Portland, they made a lot of us young guys like me watch Channel 8 to see Lou Frederick because the old folks liked the way he talked. And they wanted him, he, they considered him a good example for young black people like me and younger to follow. You know, they were really impressed with, 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 with Lou. And, 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 and um, you know, Lou, if you, if you get to learn about Lou and his family, it's an incredible story. Uh, the man's done um, a, a whole lot, and he's chosen. Lou Frederick was the type of guy who would be successful in any market he decided to move into, but he chose Portland, and he's done very good for us. And, and right now, in my opinion, he's the best uh, person of color state representative we've ever had. We haven't had very many, and he's you know just bust, blowing it up right now. And um, you know, Broody Archery, another guy... There was no counterpart to Broody Archery um, before him. Be before there was a Broody Archery, no black person did as much in Oregon government than he has. Nobody. There is nobody to compare him to. There is Broody and then everybody coming afterwards. And um, in 2000, what was it, 2009, no, 2013, um, he complimented Loretta Smith on uh, being attractive, a woman that he's known for 20 years. I've heard that they've dated at one time. I don't know if they did or not. It's none of my business. But I do know they're good friends. They've known each other for a long time. And he basically said he, she was good looking. Now, Loretta Smith is a black woman. we got a lot of issues in Oregon and other places around the country. A lot of black women not feeling as appreciated as a lot of white women because of the way our advertising is and, and the other factors. So here's a black man in public in front of a bunch of people it's telling a, a, a beautiful black woman who uh, Loretta is, you're gorgeous, you're, you're beautiful. And he ended up losing his job over it. And I think that was motivated by the incredibly just sick and perverted articles, tainted articles written by Lama Week and yes. Oregonian. Yes. Because Nick Fish compliments, who's a city commissioner, Loretta Smith all the time on her good looks. And I don't and, think... And he's black, isn't he? No, Nick Fish is a white man. And uh, Nick Fish, I hope you, wherever you're at, Nick, I hope you're doing well uh, with your with your. Um, I know you're fighting cancer right now, and I hope you're doing well. But um, Nick, you know, is uh, is is just a gentleman. Uh, Nick Nick Fish, I don't think anybody knows Nick doesn't consider yeah, Nick Fish a gentleman. He compliments her probably like he compliments a lot of women, and the, the paper feels that's totally okay for Nick right. Fish yeah. to go around yeah. and say, "Hey, yeah. you look good today," <laughs> you know. Uh, but you can't do that if you're a black man. You lose your reputation. You lose your life. And that's spearheaded, guys. Not so much by the politics or the politicians. That's spearheaded by our newspapers, our editors, people like Mark Zussman and the people uh, that are on the Oregonian and, and, and so forth. They're the ones that are spearheading this and make this a thing. I, I uh, want to make a statement, though, about Willamette Week. Um, mm -hmm. I think what's important to understand also about Willamette Week is that more so than the Oregonian and the Portland Tribune, Willamette Week focuses on sex scandals. It's Nigel Jaquis's favorite kind of preoccupation. Yeah. And I, I'm not here to put him down in terms of um, his skills as a journalist. Um, he's an excellent journalist when he wants to be. His um, articles that he wrote about, you know, Neil Goldschmidt and the girl Elizabeth Dunham were wonderful. That was a wonderful thing. But he focuses on sex scandals, and Willamette Week has that reputation. And it's, it's tawdry, and it's unfair, and a lot of times they don't do the research that they should and they don't have enough sources and their information is not accurate. They accused you of of being arrested for non-payment of child support in that article last year, and that was not true. So yeah, they retracted yeah, that. Yeah, they had to retract it. They yeah, had to retract it. But yeah. what fascinates me is they didn't even take the time to verify it. Yeah, right. You know, I don't right. know where that one came out. I right. don't know. I, and that's one of the things I don't. I don't think my daughter would have made up. But yeah. you never know. Yeah. You never know where stuff like that. You know, where, like that comes from. But you know, um, and then Derek Foxworth. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I that was the first time, friends. I really thought I needed to step out and say something about um, racism in journalism because, you know, Derek Foxworth is a good man, good good cop, um, and I hated the way the Willamette Week and the Oregonian treated him. Yeah. Um, about a he was chief of police. He was chief of police, chief of police in two thousand six. He had a relationship with a white woman. I think up until about 2000, 1999 or 2000, mm -hmm. they were both single. 
And, uh, you know, single people choose a hookup sometimes, you know, occasionally. <laughs> I know people have done that. And, uh, you know, <laughs> and uh, they stopped hooking up and then their lives went on in different directions. She never accused him of doing anything wrong. She never accused Derek Foxworth of sexual harassing her. She accused the Portland Police Department of sexual harassing her because white guys in the, uh, the police department who couldn't date her <laughs> were making fun of her for having sex with a black man. So she sued, uh, she let the city of Portland know that she was considering suing the city on sexual harassment, not from anything that, that, um, that she was accusing uh, Derek Foxworth. She never accused him of, of committing any infraction against her um, because everything that happened between her and him was consensual. She was going after the people who were making fun of her, basically racist white guys who were making fun of her. And she uh, was a staffer of the Portland she, Police Department. She was a staffer of the city of Portland assigned to the Portland Police Department. Well, so she was a staffer. She was a staffer. But the thing is, um, the reason why I was offended by how the Oregonian and the Willamette League treated her is we have... Uh, sexual misconduct I mean there were things that even uh, Tom Potter did when he was a cop I'm sure people and I'm sure Mark and those guys knew about it would consider it was sexually inappropriate it's none of my business but what I'm saying is and I'm not judging Tom Potter you know nobody ever accused him of a crime or anything like that um, not, to the, not to my knowledge nobody ever did um, I never heard anything like that but what I'm trying to say is they, they, the way they characterize uh, Derek Foxworth is like this guy is some sort of, you know, either a lovesick puppy or some pervert. Right. You know, and they, 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 they basically presented him in the most negative fashion they could when he's not even being accused of anything. Right. You know, I mean, it's not like this woman saying he raped me or he right. did. She's not even saying that D Derek did anything to her. She's saying these white guys. <laughs> that work for the city, that have badges, they are making fun of me for having sex with a black man. Well, those white guys didn't lose their jobs. They didn't. Derek Foxworth did. Right. You know, and they did mostly because of the relentless mischaracterization that Mark Zessman and the Lambert Week and the Oregonian did against a black man right. who, when the investigation was completed, the people who the city of Portland paid to investigate him said that not only did he not do anything wrong, he was a complete gentleman and uh, a perfect pu public servant in cooperating with the investigation yeah. fully. And they basically dared this woman to sue the city. I mean, that, the, the, if you read the report, they're basically telling this woman, "Bring it on." You think you know, Derek or the city of Portland has done something wrong? Bring it on. You know, what I mean, let's sue us. Not, not oftentimes does a black man get accused of uh, sexual misconduct with a, with a white woman. Do we get exonerated? You know, in my lifetime, let alone the lifetime of people older than me, black guys have lost their jobs, let alone their careers over stuff like that. Their and lives. Their, you know, yeah, their, lives. their lives. You know, they've lost their lives, totally. Yeah. Lost everything over, yeah. over mischaracterizations, assassinations like that. Yeah. And so I looked at... You know how Willamette Week treats, and there's other instances. People, I'm not. We, I don't have time on this show to talk about all the negative things they've done to Black Portland, and it's not just Willamette Week. Willamette Week's in one on point right now. Oregonian does too, um, and and it goes all the way into the newsroom. That's what I want my friends and and family out there to understand. They don't even hire Black people. I live in a town where I got white people trying to move into neighborhoods that have a mixed you know, uh, uh, group of people, black, white, different religions and everything. I know business people who are trying to push their company forward and, and be more inclusive. I, you know, I'm in real estate. I hear from this all the time. But I don't see it reflected in the people who run our government, and I don't see it reflected in the people who are in our journalism community. Um, it is a absolute white person's deal. And they, they keep doing things in a way in which that perpetuates that. And one of those things that perpetuates that is it intimidates people of color and other minorities from running. Now, a few of us have run. I've run. But as good as I think I would be for the city on city council, and friends, I think I would be uh, good for, for the city on Portland City Council, I don't think I'm the 
absolute only one that would be good. I think there are others out there that would be great assets to our city that happen to not be white. The problem is if you're black and you got a lot to contribute, <laughs> you've got to just understand that you're you're dealing with a bunch of, you know, with a, with a Steve Bannons and David Duke wannabes. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I mean, you were just saying, come on down, black boy, black girl. You know, I'm ready for you. Got the noose in the back. My noose, though, is in print. I'm not going to use an actual uh, rope. Right. My noose is in print. Right. I'm going to talk about your family, your right. grandfather, great-grandfather. Right. I'm going right. to talk about right. any infraction that I can find that will intimidate white people to not want to vote for you. Um and I'm not being racist by doing it. I think, you know, I mean, Mark Zussman and all these guys don't think so. They don't think that's they're being racist. They, they and don't that's understand. what's sad about it. They don't think it's racist at all. Yeah. And, you know, um, Mark Zussman, when I was talking with him, he asked me to give him examples of him or his newspaper being racist. Evidence. Evidence. Yeah. What's evidence? And I gave him some of the same evidence I'd just given you. And um, he basically said we have to agree to disagree. And the thing that caught me when he said that was, you're requiring me to use a higher level of evidence to prove that you're racist than you used in the article you wrote about me to prove that I beat on women. You know, I mean, he, yeah. he basically just told me right there how he felt about not just me as a person like Fred Stewart, but me as a black person because he is a person with Jewish heritage I think would see that imbalance, would see that that contradiction, because trust me, people, he's older than me. I think Mark's a good 10, 15 years older than me. Yeah. Um, Mark has faced some discrimination on his own, and he's heard about it from his parents and his grandparents, and he's witnessed it. He's not a dumb man. He knows what discrimination is all about. He knows how destructive it is. He understands the covert and overt racism. That's why, like I told Mark, and I did say this to Mark, you know, even though I don't think he's a David Duke type of racist, this is why I think his racism is intentional. Because I think a guy like him would know. He knows what discrimination is all about and how it can affect people. And he understands the damage he does. But why would he know that? Because, I mean, our Jewish cousins and, and stuff they have faced a lot i mean just in our lifetime that's true. and though they don't face it like me i mean mark when he walks into a room he's a white guy mm -hmm. see that's you the understand thing. that's the thing but he's, he's still when, a white man i guarantee you in his life he's been in a room and a bunch of people figured out oh my god that's a jew right you know what i'm talking about probably that, in the early 70s it, it, probably in the 70s yeah. or when he was in right. high school or right. college right. and he has faced that same thing that i'm facing with him mm -hmm. you know what i'm talking mm -hmm. about i mean he has had what he did to me, though mine was you know citywide, yeah. but in general he's had those same things done, where people have treated him differently in a negative way because of his religion, because of his heritage, and you know that's what disappoints me so much, not just in Mark but in myself because I told Mark I said you know Mark, I've felt this way for with you for a long time and it took, it took what you did to me with my daughter to get me to feel like I needed to say something. We should clarify that. Last year, in 2016, Willamette Week wrote an article. Mm -hmm. Fred Stewart pinned his 16-year-old daughter against the wall, and then he sued her. You know, that was the title of the, yeah. of the article. And that's classic yellow journalism. Classic. It's sensationalism. It's mm -hmm. inaccurate. Yeah. And they used her as a source and maybe her mother a yeah. little bit, and yeah. that was it. They didn't interview... You know, they may have accessed some police records, but they didn't interview the police officer that came. Well, they to the accessed house. the police records. The police records said right. I never did anything. Right. You know, right. you know the, the DA. I've been investigating. And, 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 and the thing about that article that's important is Willamette Week. You know, this includes Mark Zussman and Nigel Jaquis because Nigel Jaquis is is the golden egg um, at Willamette Week. He's probably more important than than Zussman, really. Um, these are the two head guys. They make the decisions. Jaquis probably has as much power. As, as Zussman does. They were more than willing to come between a father and a daughter and, and basically use that girl, 19 years old, young, naive, very inexperienced, mm -hmm. angry at her dad, angsty teenager like I was angsty when I was 19. They're willing to come between a father and a daughter and destroy that relationship 
and traumatize your mother, Dorothy, and other family members to the point where now your daughter doesn't have any black family members that support her, that want contact with her. She's completely isolated herself. And I'm sure she's still, to a degree, that angsty kid. And she's going to blame daddy for everything. And he was, he didn't do this for me and he didn't do that for me, blah, blah, blah. In five or ten years, she's going to look back and she's going to see how she was used. And to me, that's what's so outrageous about this situation. And, you know, we talked the day that you ran into him, mm -hmm. September 5th, and we talked for a while. And, and I remember you saying how he mocked you and basically rubbed it in your face that she sure seemed happy when I told her we were going to run the story. That's yeah, what, said. what happened. That's with reprehensible. I, I, was, I told him that my daughter has no connection with her black family and we had a pretty large family yeah. nationwide and there's a lot of things about my family um she just doesn't know because you know um there was no communication whatsoever my mother um is the one that hurts me the most because right. you know this is my mother's and my father's only grandchild uh, and um you know there's a lot i think as a young black woman my daughter needs to learn, need to, needs to mm -hmm. get, that she can only get from a woman like my mother. Yeah. And, um, I mean, my mother's raised three kids, um, for the most part, on her own. Um, and we're all professionals in one way or the other. We've all, none of us are criminals, unless it's my daughter or my ex-wife. None of us are accused of being physically abusive to anybody or anything like that. Um, my mother is somebody that I... I really wish my daughter would know more about. But what I'm getting to, guys, is this is the vision as a black father I got. My daughter wanted wanted to be a journalist. and She went to college to, to try to become a journalist. And um, to have a double Pulitzer Prizing right. winning right. journalist, Mark Zessman, you know, reach out to her. I mean, the, the, the power of manipulation is, is so overwhelming. I mean, um, and also we should also point out the fact that Nigel Jaquist did lie to you. Yes. Now I wrote the article last year after they did their their hatchet job on you, and you know, and I we talked, mm -hmm. and and you told me he lied to me, and I asked you, I said, what did he tell you? Did he tell you he was going to do the story? And you said no. He said I'm not going to do a story on he on you. So number one, Nigel mm -hmm. Jaquist lied. Nigel Jaquist is like everyone else; he is capable of lying. So he's not this knight yep. on a white horse. He's yep. not perfect. Yeah, how he did it is he said, Fred, you know what we do? We do background checks on everybody right. who runs for office. And he says, I want to. I got some questions for you I want to ask you mm -hmm. um, about your background. And he, we covered a lot of things. I mean, he definitely did a thorough background check on me. And that's one of the things that scares people who want to run for office. But I tell people, look, nobody who's ever run for office is perfect. Um, except Barack Obama. <laughs> Nobody's ever run for office as perfect except Barack Obama. Yeah. Uh, so don't feel like you got it. Sometimes it's your imperfections that's going to make you the biggest asset to the people that vote for you. Right. But what I'm saying is, when it came to me, he didn't tell me what he was going to write about. He told me actually he wasn't going to write about anything. He told me, he says, hey, I'm just here to clarify some stuff. And uh, I was truthful with him, which I think everybody who's in public should be truthful. Right. I do believe in the freedom of the press. I do believe that politicians owe it to the press to be up front with them and be truthful. I don't believe in liars. And uh, so I told him the truth about everything. And I uh, also assumed that he's going to double check everything. And uh, that's how everything pretty much ended. And, and I remember we talked earlier because before the story came out, we talked... Um, on Facebook or something, mm -hmm. you asked me about him. Yeah. And I told you, oh God, don't talk to this guy. He's not trustworthy. Yep. He's a snake in the grass. He will use whatever he has, whatever means he has available to him to, to get the story out, whether it's accurate or not. He, he loves to ruin people. And when I, when I did my research on him, I found an article. He was making a speech at some university, and he said that, you know, journalism was better than sex. He made some comment about how it was basically better than sex. And that, that's the power and the control that he experiences that he gets off on when he writes those, as Ron Buell called them, those gotcha stories. And, and that's, what's, that's what's really uh, tragic about, about um, what's happened. Um, but, yeah, he... Uh, 
he 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 exposed himself as a, as a dishonest person. Well, okay, let's 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 mm -hmm. uh, giving you the opportunity to, to share your thoughts and feelings mm -hmm. about what um, what has just transpired. But let's go back to the whole issue of journalism, okay, and how it's been reflected today. And in all due respect, I'm very familiar with the Willamette Week. Uh, it's a freebie. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not a paid subscription kind right. of a situation. And uh, and when you start thinking about pushing newsprint and selling newsprint. You got to have yellow journalism. You got to have <laughs> sex. You got to have race. Mm -hmm. You got to have black. And when you and and uh, and it's and you know black, as one would say, black elected official. If if there's such a such an animal or a person out there, that's a very positive kind of situation. They don't appear in those kinds of papers. You know, they got to have something that people will pick it up from. And it's a sad note. And you know, it's a sad note that, that, that that's the way it is. But that's one paper. Then you've got, um, and you think about, and it's not a, it's not a large paper. It's not a statewide publication. Mm -hmm. It's a local publication, right. and it, it really some just, people call it a rag. It is a rag, but the <laughs> bottom line is it it does focus to a certain base of folks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and those people do vote. Mm -hmm. And and when they put out the IE, these are the ones we've we've endorsed, if you will. Those that 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 source, if you will, well, will go towards that. Well, base. yeah, but you also got to remember, Willamette well, Week is. There, there's not a lot of difference when it comes to racism and stuff and the gotcha stuff between them and the Oregonian. Well, I mean, maybe not as much. I, I mean, mean, they're not into the, the I mean, remember the sex thing. The, again, the Oregonian is a statewide newspaper. That's it's a different thing. Yeah. They got subscribers. You know, I used to own the paper well, at one point in time. And another yeah. another another important point to make is the death of the print newspaper. That's mm -hmm. that's what yeah. basically the yeah. the crux of this whole issue is the yeah. Oregonian and the Willamette Week. They're dying. Yeah. The print newspaper is dying, so they're resorting mm -hmm. to sensationalistic techniques, mm -hmm. yellow journalism, mm -hmm. stories like the story they wrote about you. Well, the thing is, what I look at is there's so many great things going on in, in Portland, right? In Oregon, in general. Not just with black people, but in general. You mm -hmm. know, if, they, if the newspapers brought real news to people consistently, yeah. were more diverse in their, the type of writers they, they've got, where it's more diverse in the discussions that they try to provoke, uh, you know, their their readership would actually be increasing because yeah. what I've learned just through my Facebook is there is a need for people to continuously learn through discovery of what other people are thinking. Well, that's right. a whole different market. Yeah, right? that's I understand. Media. That's but, a whole different no, I know, but I'm just saying they <laughs> they can be integrated more into social media and make money. They yeah. can make they can integrate both the print and the social media. There are newspapers that are doing it around the country, yeah. but the, the thing is, they choose not to. And then when it comes to people of color, and people who are not just let's say your average white person, you're mm -hmm. some running. Um, if there is any such thing as an average white person, but what I'm trying to say is. They do a very good job as, of intimidating people to not contribute. I mean, Bruce, I wasn't going to bring this up, but I look at how people have treated you over the years. You know, you're in that list, too, of how the Oregonian and the Limit Week Ignoring. ignore you. Right. And when they do write about you, they don't say all the positive things about you. I mean, you're right. one of the few black people who have interviewed, what, maybe 5,000 everybody. I mean, you've, in, you've interviewed. Right. Charlie and Hales. Char I mean, uh, Living and yeah. dead, you know what I'm talking yeah. about. I mean, right, you right. you are a trove of history, right? right. Um, they don't honor that at all. Right. They don't find any value in that, you know, at all. Now, if you were right. white and and there's nobody white like you um, in Oregon, but I guarantee you, if you're white, they would have a different take on you. I agree. You understand? Um, they, they would have a 100% different take mm -hmm. on you. Mm -hmm. I think one of the reasons why those white guys at, the, at Oregonia and those white guys at... Uh, what, guys, one of the things I did, I'm not going to get too deep into this, I, got, I was upset with the Limit Week and the Oregonian last year. I was upset with Nigel. I was upset with Steve. So I did something that any black person I think that makes good money in this town would do. Is I paid some very, very, very skilled and smart people to let me learn about everybody in their family, about them, what they do, who they <laughs> hang out with, who's having, you know, affairs, everything. Right. <laughs> they may not believe this, but the people that know me, they know it's true. Mm -hmm. I just want to know what kind of guy Mark Zussman was, because I only knew him from a pro pro professional standpoint. I want to know, does Nigel have arguments with his daughter? His daughter is about the same age as my daughter, um, you know, and stuff like that. Well, what happened? 
Well, let's just say I learned a lot about no, well, the journalists why, why, in our in our. Why didn't you print it and publish it? And well, sell it. I have scared. They're, I they're haven't scared decided what I'm gonna. Do. I'm, I haven't decided what I'm gonna do with all this. I'm still collecting. You got that it. information? You I got it. it. I'm still collecting <laughs> well, it. Give it to me. I, it's, it, we'll it's, a, it's become a uh, passion, uh, of sorts. Because one of the things I wanted to know, just from an intellectual standpoint, uh, are these good people? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, are these right. the type of people I would listen to? If they post it on my Facebook or if we're sitting at a bar, you understand what I'm talking about? I mean, yeah. um, one of the things that scares me, guys, is in 1991 when Tom Metzger uh, lost that lawsuit for um, being sued by the Southern Poverty Leadership. Southern Poverty Law Center. Law Center, Law Center here in Portland <laughs> for the killing, the skinheads killing yeah, yeah. Uh, the, a young Ethiopian man in, we'll in, in 1980. Okay. Yeah. One of the things he promised white Portland, because he was so mad at white Portland, mm -hmm. he said white people in Portland didn't know how to be white, and he was going <laughs> to teach white people in Portland how to be white. And how, he, how he was going to do it was he was telling the skinheads to grow your hair out longer, oh, stop getting tattoos, right? get jobs. Integrate. Integrate. Right. Get jobs in journalism. Right. Get jobs in, uh, yeah. in government. Run for office. Right. He said that down at the um, federal building. In 1991, right. and I've always that's always stuck in the back of my head. Um, you and know, so, and so the question is, who can you trust? Who can you trust? Right. Who on the? I mean, we don't know the backgrounds of the people who bring us our news because they don't report on each other. Right. Uh, we had um, uh, Joel Iwanagua. What's the name of the guy from Channel Six that was shoplifting? Oh, yeah. That was busted shoplifting. Right. I liked him, but he was shot. He shoplifted, and they didn't say nothing until he was convicted. You know what I mean? It was like a four or five month period of time difference. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Now, if, if it had been me running for office right. or any black person in office, anybody in office, they would have reported that. Two days later. Two days later. <laughs> but Joel had, he worked. He actually did a story a week before he quit. Right. And he only quit because he pleaded guilty right. to a misdemeanor. You, you understand? <laughs> And I like Joel. I'm not trying to throw him under the bus, but that gives you an idea. And I learned a lot, and I've committed myself, whether I run for office or not, that I'm always going to learn a lot and know a lot about the people in our journalism community. I want to know about them. I want to know about their wives, their boyfriends, their girlfriends, their who they have affairs with, um, their education background. Well, you should publish it. Mm -hmm. You I mean, know, that, that's journalism. So, 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 put, put like this. But it's factual. I'm right? in the phase. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, that's factual. It's factual. Right? I'm yeah, in the phase good. where some of the stuff I want to verify. I got to learn what to do. You, 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 you hired someone to do it. I hired people, and they were so, very good. What would be interesting, perhaps, is to create a website yeah. that has all the journalists in Oregon and Portland listed with yep. some basic information on their family background. And then that kind of thing, like well, a like an index, like an index. Yeah, yeah. But, but at the same time, uh, let's put it this way. Now we got we got about fifteen minutes more. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about the Willamette Week for quite some time. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about Mark. You know what I mean? He's in business. I will say Mark's not know. a good person. No, okay, he's well, not. but he's but he's in business. He's, he's mean spirited. He's the Willamette Week aspect of it. And he's a racist. I, I think it would be an opportunity here, as a fair opportunity, to invite Mark to come here on the Oregon Voters <laughs> Digest. It would be great to have Mark And let, let him here. let him respond, if you will. Uh, over and beyond, what is his newspaper? You know, what's mm -hmm. the intent of his newspaper? What are the benefits of? of you know, to be fair to uh, Mark, wait, which wait a minute, what, 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 uh, what does his, what is, what is his contribution, if you will, to the, to the wellness and the livability mm -hmm. of our city? Right. Because he's, he should be a responsible. You know, to be a, a fair yeah. one, you should invite him. I would, I shouldn't be on that show. It should just be you and Mark. <laughs> well, just like uh, we're doing uh, it now. Yeah, no problem. Do it right then, now. Then, then afterwards, maybe we'll get together. Yeah. Then. And I can predict what will happen. Mark would never be on this show because he wouldn't be able to handle being in the hot seat. No, no. I, I, let's see. I'm gonna challenge him on that piece aspect <laughs> of it. He, he, I'll do yeah. Mark, please come on down to Oregon Voters <laughs> Digest. And we'll talk about the news. Because no news and Nigel, journal, too. Because ju yeah. journalism They'll as a rule right it. now <laughs> yeah. is in the dumps. They have yeah. no credibility it across is. the co country yeah. in the yeah. world, just like our so-called elected yeah. Congress. And they are all right now yeah. looking forward to March and April yeah. when they're going to be, their biggest newspapers during the year tend to be their endorsements of candidates. Right. Wow. So, I mean, this always makes me laugh about these guys, and as, especially as I learn more and more about, uh, you know, more and more about them. You know, um... If you've got a bias against a particular group of people and nobody's ever going to know, right? Um, who's to say that you're not going to endorse other candidates who have that same bias? I mean, there is no way to rectify for the public 
that their editor, we're all assuming that the journalists that we read in the major newspapers are level-headed good people. Right. Just like when we go to the doctor, we consider that a, nobody thinks the doctor may be racist or right. may not like somebody because they're gay. I'm hurt. I want, you know, you go to professional and you figure as a professional they're going to give you the best care possible. But Fred, yeah. but at the same time, you know, and again, in general, that's right there, mm-hmm. you do have an opportunity. You know, because I, you know, I couldn't refuse an ad when I was the publisher of The Observer. Mm-hmm. If, if I did a quote out there in an article or whatever that was written, that's right there. So if you got the money, you can, re- you can do a full page ad and he won't say no. Yeah. No one will say no in the, in that in the business. I'm sure I, I if I wanted I, to do a full ad in Willamette Week in Oregonian, they would take my money. But and it would be that, really expensive. Uh, and that, oh, that's God. what I'm saying. Yeah, but I, my point and I don't is, think they would charge but, me but more that, than anybody that, else. But. but the point I'm making is that that shouldn't be the fact. You you, you should not have had to react to something that they're supposed to have had the facts to begin with. Yeah. As yeah. opposed to him saying you re- you're responding to the facts. Well, so, that's why I did what I did. You know, I I said you know what it's interesting. They did a background check on me and checked. Because and then they're going to do a a a a, 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 um, a paper and tell the public whether or not the candidate is a good person, let alone should they be elected. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. And I'm like, but who's doing that to the journalist? Right. You understand? Well, that's right. I can we be, need a watchdog. I, as, as a black person, <laughs> I could be sitting across a guy who right. thinks David Duke is the second coming. Right. right. As, as exactly. far as I know. But like I, I said, I, 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 would, I would like to say one thing. I would like to say one thing. Okay. I've been on the show for the last a little over two years, yeah. and sometimes I guest host, and, mm-hmm. and and it's only been about around that time that I really started learning about racism. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a white person, so yeah. I'm very white, <laughs> glowing, lighting up this room. Um, one thing I've learned is people who say, I've never, I am not a racist. I've, I will have to agree to disagree, Fred. That kind of absolute refusal to acknowledge mm-hmm. institutionalized mm-hmm. racism mm-hmm. is wrong. I've thought, felt, and done some things that I, you know, that are, are racist because I was raised in a certain way, even though my parents were enlightened and we were never allowed to use foul language when describing people of color. Mm -hmm. But the fact that Mark Zussman would so adamantly deny that he or his organization is in any way racist is an indicator that he's in complete denial about the realities of institutionalized racism. Well, you know, the thing is, you're right, but he's either in complete denial or you can also look at it, if you don't give him the best benefit of the doubt, say that he accepts it and feels it's okay. You understand? I mean, I don't know enough about Mark yet, and trust me, I'm trying to learn as much as I can mm-hmm. um, to say it where he's 100% at on either way. Well, he, the, the thing about Willamette Week is the tone of their of their rag is mocking and let's get those gotcha stories out there, those sex scandals, mm-hmm. you know, those titillating stories that are exciting, that get readers. Um, but they like to poke fun at people. And what yeah. they did to Lou Frederick and Lou Frederick's family is an indicator. Lou Frederick's great-grandfather was born a slave. What did they do in that article? They pointed out that the, they said his fly was undone. Number one, it was a small portion of the top. They would rather poke fun at this former slave's fly being a little undone than, like Fred said, the, the wonderful contribution that this man made, making sure that his children and grandchildren were all college educated. That's what they should have been focusing on instead of his fly being open. That's the tone of and the paper. And I brought this up with Mark. I know there has to be a story out there yeah. of, of Holocaust survivors. Right. You know, I mean, a, a guy I know, his father and mother survived. Uh, his mother didn't get, go to a, de- a death camp, but she was over in Europe. Mm-hmm. Her, his father survived the Holocaust. He was actually in a camp. Yeah. You know, they moved to America. Ten years after he, uh, the Holocaust, he's in America. He has a career. He has children. You understand? He raises those children to be, you know, college educated and contribution to, you know, to the to the public. Yeah. Had a had a grandson. Had a grandson that came close to going to the Olympics. But what I'm getting to is you look at, you say, guy, you just went through hell. Right. You know, your wife basically went through hell too, not as much as you. You come to this country and you build this family. Right. You know, you build this success. This good thing. This yeah. good thing. Yeah. And mean to tell me you would make fun of, maybe he has a button undone in, in a picture, or, you know, talking about maybe his hat's tilted the wrong way. 
You know what I mean? You're gonna you're gonna make fun of a guy like that. Shallow. You know, you're it's not very shallow. you're not gonna look at the immensity of his contribution. But, but you can get away with that if you if it's a black person. Right. You can't yeah. get away with that with a person who has no due respect, where it has white skin, so to yeah. speak. Because no due respect is, like you said, Jewish are looked at as, as they are white. When they right. walk into a room, mm -hmm. right. you know, people are still calling everybody niggas. Yep. What about them niggas over there? What about that Fred nigga over there? Blah, blah, blah. You didn't do something well, like this, well, Mark. Well, they still so, use that word sometimes when I walk in the room. Well, well yeah, but sometimes, Fred, you got that jarhead hat on. <laughs> if you didn't have jarhead hat, it'd be a different ballgame. But, but I guess the point is that and that's one of the reasons why the Oregon Rules Digest is, is doing this. We need to talk about this more. This is a good discussion. I yep. think this is something that's well worth it. And it's not just Mark, it's the rest of journalism too, across the right. board. And it's not just uh, the newspaper, it's also the, 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 the video aspect of right. it, TV, sh TV yep. news, and this right. you don't see them anymore on, on the tube, that's if true. you will. They're not interviewing anybody. Look, you know, who, who's, who am I thinking about? I'm thinking about uh, Ken Body aspect of it. He's, he's, he's on at night gonna, on the weekend. No, but my point is that he's not there anymore. He, yeah. He's not an anchor anymore. He's just there just to be black, yeah. <laughs> just to show it. And he did. So, so there's a lot of things that are happening right now. But I just want to make it a point to the fact that the Voters Digest, is, we're spending yeah. the time on this purposely because we need to do this. But it's not just Mark, but we would like to have Mark come on. Yep. Because get, no get due the respect, other editors. Because no, well, no due respect, and all due, because he happens to be Jewish. I think it would be good to get his comments in terms of the things that you shared with the public here openly, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because there's, the Jewish community is still having the, their problems today too, right, right. big time, right. you got me? I, I agree, yeah. that's why I'm surprised with a guy like him. Oh, this is I mean, time. because like well, I said, it's not but, like... But, but maybe, but, but I'm my not, point is that, I'm not you know, surprised. But the idea is give him the opportunity. He may just make the part of, hey look, this is business. You know, I'm 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 doing yellow journalism to sell ads. Right. That's yeah. my job. Okay. So now, now if if you want to give me the, the deal or something like that, that's a different book. No, no. You want to write an article, you can go on and do it. But this is what's going to cost you to take a full page. Yeah. Now, if he comes out that way, then the sensitivity deal that's another issue. Yeah. But he also needs to be educated. But the rest of them too. I just yeah. don't want to just just focus just on the mark routine. I don't talk about media across the board. Yeah. No, no friends. You know, and I want the I other thing. Make, I want, let me make another go good point. Another good point, and that is that. Yeah, we are we are getting to election time. We've got some folks that are wanting to run for office. We got some serious issues it here is. within the city. The gentrification issue aspect of it, we got homeless issue aspect housing. of it. Housing. We got a housing, we got a whole bunch of things and we got folks that, that have that background. I'm not looking just for the fluff of people just running right. because they look good or they got some brother. No, 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 that's BS. Yeah. And in fact I plan to run. I'm planning on running on well, city. I, I haven't ruled it out. No, no, but, but if you're not running yet, so yeah. You can't no, but I haven't, I haven't ruled it out. But I'm running for county. I'd no, also, wait, wait. I'm running for county commissioner. Oh, really? Right, I'm going to Which run one? For county, the one that uh, with Loretta Smith is going to be leaving that particular seat. Well, congratulations. And as far as I'm concerned, I want to, and the way I'm going to run is going to be very simple. I'll remember whoever runs. I'm going to say, put your res put your resume out. Show yeah. me what you've done. Right. Because that's what we need now. We need some good, strong leaders at this point in time. Folks that will take the lead. So anyway, I'm going to be running. Congratulations, Mark. I, I, have not, I, I think I'm you not, really should I'm not, run. I've not personally filed yet, but I'm running. Well, nobody has filed. There's people who are you're getting ready you're to running. run. I know you're running. And and you, you should feel comfortable in saying that you're running. Well, I've got some things I want to take care of first before I, I, I really get done with it. And then i got to tell you, the more I find out about our journalists, I don't know. I don't, well, I'm trying, Fred, to, figure they, out, I'm they, trying they, to figure out where I could fit in Fred, Fred, the gonna, best. They're going to be there unless you've got the money. Now, if you got the money, you can put the ad in the paper, their respective paper. That's true, too. But if not that, you can forget well, about there it. There is one the message we, we got to make sure you get out. There are What's other that? people out there of color in Portland, in Oregon, who are interested in running. Right. Who are afraid to run right. because of people like Mark Zussman exactly. and other and but, editors but hey, and stuff. Yep. In the times of the day, they should file. I know. Forget about I this business about Don't be kid. afraid. That's right. You just yeah. don't run for office. Be afraid. That's right. That's right. Um, one of the even though I've lost, I've run was it run three times. Well, you won. Even to, even to, even though I've lost, I will tell you, I've always become a better person. Yeah. A better. A, I've yeah. always contributed. I think more afterwards. You know, when you run. You run to win, but you have to understand that if you don't win, that your fight isn't over with. Right. You get to contribute in other ways, maybe in broader ways than you ever thought. Well, it tells you whether so, or not you have the issues for so your platform. If you are a person of color and you care about your community, you care about your family and friends in the community, uh, and you think you have something run. to contribute, run. Anything you've heard me say here about racism and stuff, don't let that intimidate. Know it's there. And understand there are people who are going to be doing things to make sure that stuff goes away. But run. Don't be afraid. 
this is your community and there's a lot of people both black and white who have given up so much just so we could even have the notion of doing stuff like that. Well, you know, yeah. Fred, I'll tell well you one said. thing about this particular show, this particular issue, with you here sitting there, looking like you've given up your, your platform is sitting there. You're going to be talking about hate and racism. You said you're uh. sort of taking it away from the Oregon Voters Digest. Uh, let me <laughs> well, so have to well, probably call you back and call someone else up who is going to be running for your seat. Hate, though. racism, definitely. I'm always going to be going after things like that. You I hate, made that I hate, you I made hate that discrimination. And while, but well, I'm also going to be talking about we, housing okay, and, well, we and only have, We only have about two minutes or so, and I, I want to take you back to the fact that you know you can in fact google if you will this is a live stream right now on on uh, on youtube so please check it out but the article is a very interesting article because there were some things that i would like to have asked more about uh um, within that article but i would encourage you to read that hopefully we can get that on the screen yeah, it's while at, we still it's at fredstewart.com well, okay but i'm gonna see if we can put that on the screen okay. while we add it and then the times uh, uh the, the repeat time on this piece with as far as comcast is concerned uh, you can throw that on there i'd really appreciate that we got about another about a minute or so put yeah. put the times uh, Tuesday hey, there Friday. you go we got him yeah. right there there we go and that's fred stewart he was a short group, and you got and, Teresa Rayford. And, 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 and my, my, my Jesus, website right? is fredstewart.com. It's just simple. <laughs> I told you that. Fredstewart.com. <laughs> you can go and read the article, and feel free to comment or post, and feel free to definitely on sharing it on social media. I really want a, a conversation about racism and journalism, especially as we're going into this, this next election cycle. I think it's going to help us all have better politics and help us all get better people well, you, you running know, you, for office. You, you, you're really, yeah. really acting like a candidate. You better just go on and announce the fact you're going to run. <laughs> you're sort of trying to take over the show. I mean, this, this is the Oregon Voters Act. I mean, this is for candidates. Are you planning on running, Fred? I, I, I'm going to be thinking about it and talking I, I, about I, I it. I didn't say my... thinking. Are you, going to, are you thinking about Are you going to be running? I'm very seriously you know, looking at running. You're, you're not far, seriously looking at I'm it. I'm seriously there looking at it. There you go. He's I'm a very candidate. Very seriously Which seat looking. are you thinking about, real quick, like? Uh, city Council. City Council. We ain't in the There's only two jobs I want. Which one you want? What I'm doing, which is selling real which estate, one are you and the other one running? is uh, you, what seat were you going to run? I haven't decided yet. Which one do you think I should run for? Well, I, I don't do respect. Nick, Nick really needs to give it up. You know, and I don't do respect. He, the guy's having some real me medical problems. He should give it up and just go and take care of family and take take it easy and come out here and have a cup of coffee with Bruce and we can sit down there and commentary about, mm -hmm. about a lot of the issues that he still he, he was very much involved with and things of that nature. So mm -hmm. I think it's a good seat. It'll be a good seat. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. I guess we got we got Joanne Bowman that's going to be running against. Uh, Dave Salzman. Uh, Dave Salzman. I think that's mm -hmm. a good piece aspect of it. And I had rumors about the fact that, uh, was it McGee, I think, was thinking about possibly, possi he has I, I, that's, that's, that's it, I don't know, but uh, we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Thanks very much. Real, great job. Thanks yeah. very much, Steve. Yeah, Appreciate that. You. Hey, folks, have a good one. Talk to you next time around. We're going to have another good show coming up.